E3D claims that this hotend will improve the maximal flow rate by 60%. But what about layer adhesion? And what if we use 0.6mm nozzle? Let's find out. Welcome to my tech farm. E3D sent me some nozzles for the testing. This is high flow obsidian 500, 0.4 and 0.6mm nozzles. And I got these boxes for free, but there's an additional payment from their side. But this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker and by my Patreon supporters. Theoretically, these nozzles can reach 500 degrees Celsius, but of course we will be limited by the printer. In this case, uh, this is for the Bembole printers, P2S 300 degrees Celsius max and H2 series 350 degrees Celsius. Few more specifications from the website. It will increase the flow rate by 60%. It is built to last. It is five times more wear resistant compared to regular obsidian. We can print with any filament and non-stick nozzle. For example, we will have less thinking if we print with PTG or something similar. And this is official collaboration between ECD and Bamboo Lab. So what will I test? Well, first of all, I want to measure the maximum flow rate with these new nozzles and I will compare them with the Bamboo Lab stock 0.4 mm nozzle. Currently I don't have 0.6mm regular nozzle. I ordered one yesterday, I'm not sure if it will arrive on time and if it will be included in this video. But also I want to measure the layer adhesion. If uh, using this high flow nozzle will, let's say, melt better the filament and we will have a better layer adhesion compared to the stock nozzles. Let's see what's in a box. These are temporary boxes, not final package. This is the back side with the lining surface and the magnets. So this is the hot zone, heat break, and then we have this heat sink and the magnet. This is the front side with a QR code and information about the diameter 0.6 and 0.4 millimeters. I'm curious why are they calling it high flow nozzles? Does it have some kind of CHT island in it? I will try to find out and I will ask them because in that case the clog risk is just a little bit higher compared to the regular nozzles and uh, we don't have the advantage if we use the core filaments because that core will hit exactly that island but with this wear resistance this shouldn't be the problem at all. In the meantime I got the answer. Filament pad is split into four channels increasing the contact surface and the heat transfer. Filaments are used, Bembole PLA basic in orange color and Polymaker new PTG in the silver color. Layer attention test objects 10 by 10 mm, 20% rectilinear infill and I'm printing this owl so I don't have slowing down because of the minimal layer printing time. In this case the speed is limited to 300 and 200 mm per second for inner and outer walls and the flow for this PLA basic is limited to 21 cubic mm per second as a default value. So it will keep this speed even in the smallest cross-section area. For the PTG one hour is not enough because of that minimal layer printing time. You can see that the flow is significantly reduced. So I'm adding another hour. And don't worry, these are gifts for my students. They really like it. And in this case, that maximum flow rate set to 21 cubic millimeters per second will stay constant. For the maximum flow rate, I'm using Orca Slicer flow from 10 to 50 and using this step it will generate the object which is exactly 50 millimeters high. From this I can calculate the max flow rate if it fails earlier. Here you can see the preview. For the PTG the temperature will be 220 degrees Celsius and for the PTG 260. There is no slowing down on the smallest cross section area. The marking is very important because we have a lot of test objects. Bamboo Lab nozzle 0.4 mm. And now the maximal flow test. Layer 110, I can see some other extrusion now. Probably I will stop it soon. Yes, that corner doesn't look good. Moving to second filament, PTG. Very fast, even on this smaller cross section area. PTG flow test 260 degrees Celsius on the nozzle. First signs of under extrusion. Mm. It was finished. 
I will analyze them later when all will be finished. It is time to switch the nozzle. First removing the cover, pay attention there is a cable attached to it. Then removing the silicon sock starting from the top. Unlocking the nozzle. Push it down a little bit and I can take it out. Inserting new nozzle. Locking it. Placing the silicon sock starting from the bottom. Cover. And it's finished in less than one minute. I can see it is extruding. And now let's repeat the printings. E3D nozzle using the same G code. <laughs> Looks like it passed that critical point. First signs of under extrusion, but it will be finished in less than one minute. Almost maximal flow. And it's finished. Now I can see some other extrusion at the end, but I will analyze it later. PETG, still E3D 0.4mm nozzle. And it's finished again, but not perfect until the end. Moving to 0.6mm bamboo lab hot end. And of course changing the nozzle in the settings. The nozzle is changed 0.6mm and the strength still 2 volts and 20% rectilinear infill, but this is not comparable to the previous printing because now those two valves are stronger compared to 0.4mm nozzle. Now about the speed, as you can see now it is reduced, even if the speed is given as maximum between 2 and 300, but it is peak around 185 and the reason for this is the flow limitation. As you can see the flow is still 21 cubic millimeters per second, but with this nozzle the speed is reduced. Printing with 0.3 mm layer height and the printing time is not significantly reduced because of that flow limitation and it will be interesting to compare the quality of the printing at the end. It looks slower compared to 0.4 mm nozzle but the flow is the same only it looks slower because of bigger dimensions of the line. Well, with some errors, but it is finished. Still bamboo wrap 0.6mm nozzle moving to the PETG. It will be finished in 2 minutes and I was afraid that it will be perfect until the end, but now I can see some other extrusion. Just for comparison it's better. And it's finished. And now the last change of the nozzle in this video. Same G-code for 0.6mm nozzle. One more minute and it will be finished and it looks completely fine. And look at this flow rate. Uh, yes, hardly noticeable, but I can see some minimal signs of the under extrusion here on the top. Last test objects from PETG. E3D 0.6mm nozzle. And finally the last flow test. What is the most annoying that this kind of printing must be supervised but this time it was finished correctly. Let's analyze the print quality first. So this group is printed with 0.4 and this with 0.6 mm nozzle. I couldn't notice any difference visually between different nozzle types. So the print quality is very similar using the Bamboo Lab stock or E3D nozzle. And these are PTG figures. And similar with the 0.6 mm nozzle, there is no visual difference between E3D and Bamboo Lab stock nozzle. But if I compare 0.4 and 0.6 mm nozzle, on side surfaces uh, no big difference, maybe just a little bit less details on 0.6 mm version. The biggest difference you can see on near horizontal top surfaces, for example here, we can see better those steps from the layers. And this is more noticeable here on the PTG parts. And now let's analyze the maximal flow. And now we have two numbers. One is the visual, for example, you can see it here. This is important if you print, let's say, figures, so you want to know on which flow it will look nice. 
but if you print some kind of functional parts, then uh, that infill will be printed faster. And if I measure some under extrusion, then it will look okay, but the part will have weaker layer adhesion. So the second value will be measured with micrometer. For example, here the wall thickness is 0.706 millimeters, and I want to record when it will be became a 5% thinner compared to the beginning, and that value is not acceptable anymore for the functional parts. For example, this is Bamboo Lab stock nozzle. This is ECD, 0.4 millimeters. So visually the ECD is fine until the end, but here I could measure some reduction in the wall thickness. And with the Bamboo Lab stock nozzle, well, uh, visually it is fine until this point, and here was a reduction in the wall thickness. I will show you the results soon. Interesting to see that with the PETG, these two values are closer to each other, and of course ECD was again better. PLA 0.6 mm nozzle, E3D was fine visually completely until the end, and the uh, Bamboo Lab stock nozzle, well, it failed a little bit earlier. And PTG 0.6 mm nozzle, E3D completely fine until the end, only in the last few millimeters I could measure some reduction in the wall thickness until the Bamboo Lab stock nozzle, it failed a little bit earlier. So everything is measured, and now let's convert these millimeters to the flow rate. These are values in millimeters and this is converted to cubic millimeters per second. In every case we can see improvement using E3D nozzle compared to Bamboo Lab stock nozzle. Big overall average is 31%, but with 0.4 mm nozzle the improvement was only 28% and uh, with 0.6 mm nozzle the improvement was a little bit bigger, 33%. And now the layer attention test objects, they are all labeled, these are printed with 0.4 and this is 0.6 mm nozzle and only the same size nozzle printing can be compared with each other. And now let's see the layer adhesion. Again, improvement of the ECD is obvious, but a little bit different. For the 0.4 mm nozzle, the improvement was 10%, not so significant, but for a 0.6 mm nozzle, the improvement was very important, 31%. And by the way, it is nice to see that this new PTG has great layer adhesion. Review of this filament coming soon. Again, this was much bigger work than I planned. Quick conclusions. Uh, is the flow rate improved? Well, definitely yes, I could measure this, that the flow rate is bigger, but if you stay in the recommended printing temperature range, in that case I couldn't notice any difference in the print quality between the stock Bamboo Lab nozzle and ECD high flow hot end. Layer adhesion. Well, again, with a 0.4 mm nozzle, the difference is not significant, so this means that settings are good, and if you use different settings, in that case the filament is melted enough and the layer adhesion is good and very similar in both cases. Of course, if manually we would set a higher flow rate than default, in that case even with a 0.4 mm nozzle, we will see some significant difference in the layer adhesion. Now with a 0.6 mm nozzle it's a little bit different. I know that uh, the bigger diameter is always harder to heat up and to have that higher flow, and here I could experience a significant difference and advantage of the high flow of hot ends compared to regular standard Bamboo Lab nozzle. Of course there are a few things which I couldn't really measure, like less sticking of the material to the nozzle, wear resistance, theoretically both are wear resistance material, durability, this should be more durable, and uh, maximal temperature. Theoretically this can be heated up to 500 degrees Celsius, but uh, we have the limitation of the printer of, I don't know, 350, for example, on H2 printers. Uh, but uh, it can really benefit in the future on those printers which can be heated up to much higher temperature. Just a reminder, hardened steel nozzle will become soft if we heat it up to 400 degrees Celsius and slowly cool down. That's one of the unailing type for the steel. So yes, definitely I think that this is more durable. Of course, you have to pay attention not to <laughs> bend it here. So this is my experience with uh, these hot ends. Thank you to Ito Dito sending me these for the testing. 
to all the others. Thank you for watching this video until the end. And don't forget, if you see the hype sign, click it and help this channel to improve its ranking because YouTube algorithm don't really like this channel. And one more time, thank you for watching the video and happy printing.